Hey. What's up? Space Cowboys back. Back? Back for the first time, maybe. Back for the first time, yeah. Back for the first time. Back right. into my life for the millionth time. So we've, had a, we've had a long ride, man. Hey, it's a Halloween special. Welcome back to Open Everything. If this is your first time, don't judge. Don't judge. I've got my referee costume. I'm going to be throwing out yellow cards, red cards, if he says anything bad or something that is XXX rated. Oh, wait, we have, like, parental guidelines on this show? <sighs> yeah, no. Oh, I'm out, dude. This is XXX. Dude, do you see Space Cowboy right now? This is not PG-13. Yeah. I mean, I think you look great. Yeah? Tell us a story about Space Cowboy. What kind of story do you want? Well, let me first introduce this cat. What's He's, that? Uh, <laughs> his name is Ryan. What uh, Sandy man. Pants, yeah? Sandy Pants. We, um, we went to college together at LSU. And we've been best friends ever since. You're it's my big like, brother in the fraternity, it's man. It's been like 12, 13 years, something like that. You hazed me, man. I didn't physically haze him. Well, uh, <laughs> damn it. That's not even true. It was all out of love. And see, you, you're still here. You just had to make sure I wasn't a huge bitch. I agree. That's kind of the point of it all, right? Tell him a story that backfired on me. Which one? About the... <laughs> there's been a lot. There's, but been, a, there's been a couple, Particularly bro. where I was telling you... Uh, Every grade that you got below 100. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Eric was my, was my big brother in the fraternity, right? Um, and as just a labor of love, he looked at me and told me uh, my freshman, my, uh, the first semester of my freshman year that he was going to be checking my grades because he wanted to make sure I was academically successful, right? Make sure I, was I didn't want person. to hang out or have to deal with somebody that was some, not, not some the smartest guy. Some average loser, right? Yeah, you got, hey, if that. you had Ds, you're not a loser. You just didn't, didn't care. You're just hot. Or you're hot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you told me that I, uh, I had to turn my test scores into you. And for every, every grade point on a test below 100... I had to do some punishment. I think it was like a minute of bows and toes or something like yeah, that. Yeah, while, while I kicked the soccer ball at him. Well, just that was the only good I had. Adds insult to injury. Yeah. So it kind of got me fired up, right? Because like, I didn't really know you very well at the time. You were just like assigned as my big brother. I was like, <laughs> I was like this motherfucker. What the fuck does he think? He you got to earn your way checking, in. Yeah. Just checking my test scores and everything. Yeah. But uh, I decided I was going to like kill you with kindness in, in some sense, right? I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna piss you off the right way about the whole situation, because I wasn't gonna let you fuck with me. Mm -hmm. So I studied super hard for my first test, and uh, there was the possibility on the test for extra credit. I worked real hard, you know, and I ended up getting an, uh, above 100% on the test. <laughs> so I got, I got a, I think it was 103 if I remember, it was my uh, first microeconomics. I got these test scores like I kind of just, just like waiting I kind of just results. sat back and like waited for you to say something just to yeah. like see if you were going to go after it <laughs> and so you look at me and you ask me about my test scores and you're normal yo hey 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 you got your test that uh as you do one of those um and I just kind of look at you and I go well uh well I got 103 so does that mean that you do three minutes of bows and toes I'm, I had to have had some smart-ass remark. I have no idea what you said afterwards, but I, I do I probably know, would have been like, fuck off, dude. But I do know that after I told you that, you never asked me about a single test score ever again. I learned my lesson. <laughs> this, guy was, this guy was smart. Which actually leads uh, into what we're going to start talking about. Yeah, uh, what are we going to talk about tonight? Well, he's a stonk person. Stonks. He likes stonks and cryptocurrency and... Uh, he works in the finance game. Butcoin. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a commercial banker. I work for a bank in town, um, somewhere between a regional bank and a community bank. And, right on. Uh, I work with a lot of the businesses around here, and yeah, that's what I do on a daily basis. We're in Denver, but mm -hmm. look at this guy. He's in finance. Do they let, I wish they let you dress like that to go to work. That'd be cool. Yeah, I don't think some of my clients would like that. <laughs> I don't think they'd be into it. 
That's some bullshit. Yeah, well, you have your like professional life and you have your work life, right? Um, and the two don't really overlap. Like when mm-hmm. I go to work, I'm I'm working and I'm doing that thing, and I don't really. Th- Think about it outside. Like, I like the people that I work with, but we're not really friends. Like, if I, like, brought anyone that I work with, like, into our friend group, like, when we go on, like, crazy camping trips and right. festivals and stuff, no, there's like, a, there's, like, a delineation between the two. And it's not, like, that one is right or wrong. It's just one's appropriate for one time and one's appropriate for another. I agree. Yeah. And we probably all are like that. Um, you go to work, and then you're a whole different wild ass. Maybe, maybe you're not. Maybe you're, you're an introvert. I, I don't know, but... You're different from when you interact with people professionally versus your personal life. Is it different? Because I don't feel that like I'm a different Not person. Me. I don't feel that I'm a different person. There are just certain things that I talk about in certain contexts when I go to work. When I go to work, I put on clothes that are you know somewhat professional, right? Jeans and a button down or something like that. Some seventy dollars slacks from Hager. Who are they seventy bucks? My like, slacks? Are they under are they under or over seventy They're bucks? Definitely over seventy dollars. Yellow card? You I'm getting yellow card for that? <laughs> he does not need to buy pants that are over fifty bucks. <laughs> no, I'm That's my limit is fifty dollars. No, alright, alright. All right. I, t- I take it back. I saw the instant replay. <laughs> when I get rich You should go into the booth, take a look at it. Yeah, when right. I get rich and wealthy, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy expensive clothes too. Until yeah. then, I wore this in college when I was actually a real referee. <laughs> Those days are long in the past. There's a, it's not that I'm even a different person, man. It's that there are certain things that we talk about and there's certain things that we go after. Mm. And those are just the topics of conversation. And I don't like flash the tattoos and flash my fucking spacesuit and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. A bunch of the people I work with are super weird too, man. Tattoos and in the closet or out of the closet or, you know, wearing crazy shit on the weekends and going to music festivals and parties and stuff like that. Like, it's just, it's not that there's anything wrong with any of that. It's that. There's, uh, in the industry, certain people only project certain parts of themselves uh, for a real or perceived, uh, for real or perceived reasons for getting through their day and being successful in their career. Hmm. And that's all it is. Hey, it's hard to be someone that I'm not. That's probably why I've gotten fired from four or five jobs in the past, because I don't do what a corporate person would want me to do so then they're mad at me and they just run you just run your mouth man you just don't know how to shut up when people are talking to you oh i listen i'm gonna listen hard on this next one listen hard here all right listen hard hard hey are you talking back easy but no uh, (laughs) that's what the yellow card's for all right well two yellow cards that means you're out like you're out of the game we're in my apartment you're gonna kick me out of my apartment (laughs) <laughs> is this your <laughs> oh yeah it's a different background than the other episodes isn't that crazy <laughs> see but uh you you told me something recently uh since you work in the money game and work with a bunch of numbers digitally and, and in real life as we all do uh there's like a perspective where it started from hey you know it started off as the barter system when we were trading bananas for apples or mm-hmm. whatever it is so take us take us along the timeline of Money and what you think about it now? The timeline of money and what I think about it. I mean, what are we in? Twenty-two trillion dollars of debt? I I don't think anybody can. I think we're closer to twenty-seven now, maybe. What does that even mean? Well, what is a trillion dollars? (laughs) What is a billion? Nine hundred ninety-nine billion dollars. Like, okay, I can visualize. It's like thousands. I can visualize a stack of like of like dollar bills in my wallet, right? Mm -hmm. Or you like you see in movies like a stack of uh, hundred hundred dollar bills that make up ten thousand like a stack it's like that thick right okay that's ten thousand dollars you're growing that exponentially to get to a billion to get to a trillion right like what is the space that it takes up I saw like an info thing on online somewhere a billion dollars stacked on pallets of cash and hundred dollar bills would fill up this entire apartment this entire living room a billion just in cash and that's a billion right that doesn't seem like a lot so if a you don't think <laughs> a, a whole a lot. you don't think a whole apartment full of hundred dollar bills is a lot it's a ton of money well, but here's the point: a trillion yeah. is a thousand billions, right? A thousand of these apartments. Yeah. And you start scaling. So twenty-seven right? trillion is 
27 thousand of these apartments that means you couldn't take the whole you guys online can't see this building but it's 27 stories tall so you couldn't fit all of the cash that america is in debt in in this entire apartment building that we're in man that's just it's crazy scope right like it boggles the brain all right, I'm gonna have to give a red card to America because that is just. <laughs> I thought I was giving a red card. My heart sank a little bit, man. No, 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 no. You're good. That, this isn't your fault. Even though our parents are like, "Well, your generation, da 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 da," and it's like, "Dude, we didn't. What? We didn't cause this fucking chaos." Uh, but no, it, it's it's crazy when you visualize. Twenty-seven trillion is basically a Trump Tower worth of uh, money that we owe to other people. It's a skyscraper of money. So this is what I don't. I don't get uh, one of my mentors online. Go check him out, Grant Cardone, uh, real estate mogul. But he basically says, don't necessarily invest in a home because people are fearful. They don't do, you know, what their dream is, or they're scared about money because, well, if I get a loan from the from the bank, I got to pay it back. So now I'm in debt. So why be in debt? to a home, cool, it's an asset, but why don't you put that investment, that same $300,000 investment into yourself, into your well-being, into your mm-hmm. um, into your business, into the cameras that I bought, right? He completely switched my mind and train of thought on like, what am I doing if I put 50,000 down in a house and then I'm just, I got a great credit score and that number that's made up mm-hmm. gets me X amount that someone like you is going to write off and say, hey, now you owe me. It's just the debt, what do they call it? Like financial literacy. We're just so behind. Well, no one ever taught us, right? Right. Like where in college did you take a financial literacy class, right? I took finance. I took accounting, but it didn't tell me how to... They didn't tell you how to. They didn't Do tell shit. you how to fix your credit score, right? right? They didn't tell you how to pay your taxes. No, we talked about these like abstract theories of economics and finance, and all Business these super like ethics. super above. <laughs> <laughs> it's like super above the shoulders, like totally mind based stuff, right? About like all these theories that are so detached from your day to day reality, and they totally skipped the day to day reality. Here's how you pay the IRS. Here's how your taxes are calculated. Here's how you make basic investments for yourself, right? No one talked about that. So, again, it's just a mind-blowing thing where you basically said everything is just, not everything, but money is essentially made up because it started from, hey, I'm going to give you this because I see the value and it's worth this. Or even Bitcoin, how's it worth, what is it, 14000 today? What is it? It's not tangible, but Mm -hmm. it is worth something. Mm -hmm. And what makes it worth something is people. It's the demand. It's the it's the market forces of supply and demand. So I don't know what the question is, but maybe you you know me well enough to know where maybe maybe I can figure the question out for you. But if we're twenty seven trillion in debt, if we're fifty trillion in debt, if we're a hundred trillion, what 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 does the number actually mean in terms of value? If the U S has or the U S dollar is the world's currency, when will it not be or is there a number or when like, will the u.s dollar not be not be the reserve currency of the world not today probably not this year probably not in the next five years but is it is it like feasible like the euro be in the world currency or the yen? Well, sure. i don't, I don't been, know how there have been a number of reserve currencies throughout the history of the world um and it's typically uh the reserve currency of the world we, we act like there's one reserve currency and then everyone else is holding only those things that's not really the case. Typically, we, when we talk about reserve currencies, we talk about what people have invested in to save their money over the long term. And some of the best places to do that are typically government bonds because they're very safe and stable and secure. They don't typically fluctuate in value very much. And until somewhat recently, they paid you a decent interest rate as well. Now, interest rates are effectively zero all around the world. So that's not really what people do with it. Hmm. Um, and so what you can do is you can look at... Um, the holdings in those currencies, uh, those government bonds, and you can say that people are saving or using those currencies. Uh, and so if you, if you put like a pie chart together of all the currencies in the world, all the reserve currencies, the U.S. is really big, but people are also using things like the euro and the yen, et cetera, uh, the British pound, stuff like that. Um, so there's not like a single reserve I currency, and it's not something... I saw a guy that made 80 billion pounds recently. 
You know what that means. Yeah, how many is 80 billion pounds? I don't know. How many is 80 billion dollars? We're back on the same topic, right? Exactly. Um, So there's not a reserve currency. It's what people save and invest in. And over the last, what is it, 2020, um, 80 years roughly, people have mostly been using uh, the United States dollar. And that goes back to World War II, when after World War II, America was the only country that was the only productive first world country that was left uh, somewhat intact in its productive capacity. Japan was destroyed, China was destroyed, and all of Europe and Russia was destroyed. Hmm. Um, And there were no other developed nations besides the United States that could uh, effectively build things, sell things, uh, and rebuild the world. And that's what the that's what America did mm. after World War II is we went and tried to instill democracy, trade, uh, trade agreements, defense agreements, etc., all around the world to find uh, some semblance of peace and order in a world that had been decimated by war. So as part of that, the United States uh, built and received what, what's been called uh, its most exorbitant privilege. And what that is, is that uh, most foreign currency transactions around the world, uh, the, base, the base currency is still what? the American dollar. People mm-hmm. are trading in the United States dollar all around the world. And those are actually terms of the agreements that we, the trade agreements that we set up around the world after World War II. That a lot of people uh, didn't know that. I didn't know that. So that's why, um, that's why we use it today. Uh, the other reason we use it today is America is still the most stable, most secure country in the world um, in terms of its military might and ability to defend the value of its dollar. Do we owe $27 trillion to other countries or do we owe $27 trillion to ourselves? Or it's, like, a, it's a good question. Um, and you can break all this down. There's statistics online. I haven't looked at it in a couple of years. Um, but a lot of it is to ourselves. It's uh, American citizens and institu- institutions and retirement funds, That's uh, including Social Security. American Social Security is one of the yeah. single largest uh, holders of government debt. So a huge swath of it is just money we owe to ourselves and to our own institutions and to our own government moving money back and forth as an accounting identity. And then the rest of it is owed to f- other countries. Wow. I have never dived into this at all, but it almost seems like Excuse me. because we owe a lot of money to Social Security. We're, what the fuck are you doing? We're in the middle of this. The camera's on you, right? Like, can't you just focus the camera? This guy's being an asshole. Can't you just edit this? <laughs> yeah. You were sitting over here telling me, telling me all this stuff about how in post-production you can do this and you can do that, and you got multiple Maybe cameras, I'll just... and you got multiple cameras, and you can merge it or not. What am I? Getting? So I'm done. I'm kicked out of my own. No, this is a yellow card. It means you stop talking back. This is insubordination at its finest. I've gotten fired for this before, so I know what it's like. But you're not my boss. I'm the ref of the game. The game is this. That I thought that was the costume. <laughs> All right, so I'm probably so, not going to edit any of that out. Sorry about that little f- frustration, that we, the little tiff that we have. <laughs> this is kind of our, our relationship. We've been, we've been best friends. We're for like an old married years. couple. Yeah, we've only fought weird. once in our life, like actually not like okay real with thoughts. each other. Yeah. Of course it was over a girl. And it was of course, over, it was and of over course the girl, girl wasn't, wasn't worth fighting over. It's in the past. <laughs> Thank God. That's in the past. Thank God that whole situation's in the past. I know, I'm going to get back to my question, I promise. But we have actually, uh, we were coming back from a place in Colorado called State Bridge. And we were really happy and talking about our relationship and how we had to actually put a title to it. So we are now in a open, non-monogamous, ethically asexual relationship. I think that's what they call it. Yes. Yeah. That's it. We're... Uh, we're an old married couple that doesn't have sex. That's, that's how it is. Never had sex. All right. Anyway, transition back to the money thing. If we owe Social Security, is that why people are so frustrated? Like, don't raise my taxes. I already put into Social Security. If they raise our taxes, we have to pay more into the debt that we owe that we've already been paying, right? Like, 
when they say Social Security may not be here when we're, what does that mean? Is, does Social Security go bankrupt? What, what does that even mean? Yeah, so it's a, um, it's a projection over time of the money Social Security expects to receive versus the money they expect to put out. Um, and when you look at that over a long enough run, they're going to have to put out more money than they currently receive. Uh, that does not mean that Social Security is going broke or won't be there. Um, there are pretty simple things you can do to the structure of Social Security that are typically politically very unpopular that easily solve the issue. Um, this is Voss. Boss. This is Boss. Boss. Hey, buddy. How are you? Boss with a V. No, it's Boss with a V. Boss with a V? No. V with a Boss? <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Whatever. Um, What's up, Kat? So there are things that we can do really easily to remedy this, like decrease the amount that we pay out to any given individual. That's politically unpopular because these people pay down expecting a certain payout and they're not going to get it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing you can do is you can raise taxes, uh, Social Security taxes, to help uh, finance those inflows. Now, raising taxes is also politically unpopular because you don't want to be taxed more. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the, there's the political and demographic discussion of um, the older voters are typically the ones that don't want to see their benefits reduced mm -hmm. um, because they're the ones who are getting paid out of Social Security, and the younger voters are typically the ones that don't want to see their taxes raised because they're the ones paying into Social Security, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there can be an old-young divide here mm -hmm. that is uh, that can be more real than the left-right divide in some sense. Right. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? It does. It's interesting. Well, I kind of wanted to talk, I mean, I don't want to talk about politics, Who who does, but uh, we're four days away from the election, so this is pre-election, and this is my general gist. All right, we've got Republicans, we've got Democrats, we've got the far right, we've got the far left, and I, I have a feeling if I can generalize, don't don't take you know, don't take this personally, but usually people on the left care about social issues, environment, people, right? Mm -hmm. I think uh, conservatives care care more about their rights, such as. First Amendment, I can say whatever the fuck I want. Second Amendment, it's my right to bear arms. And usually fiscally, right? Like, we don't want to give money to somewhere that we don't want to give money to. So it's, why do these two collide? And why are these our, our only choices? Like, is there really not like a moderation? I know it's called moderate, but is there really not someone that's intellectually <laughs> smarter than both of these cats? That can get us to a place where we need to be all around. Why is it, Why is there the two-party duopoly, the two-party sure. duality? Is that the question? Sure. I have no fucking idea. Has it always been this polarized? Because I feel like this is a very monumental It's time hard to say because I wasn't around more sure. than 30 years ago. And I was, wasn't a functioning adult until... Well, I'm still not a functioning adult. That's a different story. <laughs> uh, but when I talk to, you know... Uh, some of the old timers, they say no. They say it hasn't always been this way. And so I just kind of lean on them and say, yeah, if that's, if that's their opinion, I generally believe it. Hmm. Um, that it hasn't always been this way. It seems that social media is really dividing us. It seems that, you know, we, 20 years ago, we were looking at the dawn of what we were calling the information age. Um, the internet was really starting to take uh, a widespread foothold around the world. Um, and we were looking at all these new methods of communication, uh, you know, the email and the internet and the cell phones, and then we put the internet on the cell phones. Sorry, buddy. Um, then we put the internet on the cell phones, we had social media, and we thought for a long time that this was a really good thing, right? That we had all of this access to information. Uh, now we're inundated with information. Uh, and we're inundated with information that masquerades, we're inundated with Opinions that masquerade as facts. We're inundated with uh, literally disinformation. Uh, we're inundated with political rhetoric. Fake news. Fake news, man. This is um, fake news. We're not really here. I'm fake news. You're <laughs> fake definitely. news. Your fucking yellow cards are fake news for sure. <laughs> for sure fake news. Um, but there's so much information out there that we have an incredibly difficult time knowing for real what is true. 
we don't know anymore. We used to have institutions in the news media, et cetera, and politicians that had some degree of you know, uh, societal trust. Hmm. We used to believe what they said. Like the newspapers stated the news, right? Like that they weren't the necessarily idea. like, hey, we're leaning this way or we're leaning that way. It was just, <laughs> this is what's happening. Bare facts, the American people can decide what they want to That's what I'm told. But then when I look at history, you know, there was also the period of yellow journalism um, where things like this, you know, coincided with the widespread uh, publication and adoption of newspapers. Uh, there was, you know, all there were all sorts of newspapers out there that had, you know, different differing levels of journalistic integrity. And that's still the case. Um, but I think it makes it really hard to have what's the right way to say this um, really thoughtful discussions about politics uh, and policy decisions and politicians uh, in an age where most news consumption most political news consumption comes from very quick sound bites on your cell phone uh, from institutions that maybe haven't that maybe don't deserve large degrees of trust and this isn't meant to be a, uh, a partisan comment either way. I think that there's a lot of bad information on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. Boz, you, you chilling, dude? Dude, he's always chilling. How That's nice would it be chilling. to be a cat or a dog? Just get stroked. Don't pay bills. Hang out. Hang out. Hang out. But, like, also you're taken out of your natural habitat and put into a relatively small area. He doesn't know. Like I read somewhere that like cats in the jungle, they cover like hundreds of square miles. Yeah. Like crazy large areas. That, that's explores. their territory. And he's got an 800 square foot apartment. He enjoys it. He didn't know anything different. No, he doesn't know anything different. <laughs> but he chills, man. That's all he wants to do. All right, so we talked about um, to money a little bit. We talked about politics a little bit. So that was it. We did the thing we wanted to do. Yeah, I think that's it for us. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, we, we don't have more time to talk about everything that we always talk about. I mean, I think you're totally full of shit because it's like 6.30 on a Saturday night. We have nothing going on after It's this. Halloween and we're quarantining, baby. We're trying to be responsible, we're man. Being responsible. We're trying to. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought really highly of a couple people. Um, you know, I was invited to a couple parties and I think people, once they saw what, what was going on with coronavirus, they... Uh, they made the right decision, in my opinion, to, to cancel the parties because they said it's, this just isn't the right time to be doing something like this. And I, and I really respect people for making those decisions. Mm -hmm. They do. 